Okay, so here's a couple more concepts. You have the concept of the resultant vector, and the definition is the resultant vector is basically going to be a the vector that results from two or more vectors being added together. So we're going to break down vectors into components, the horizontal and vertical components. We're going to add them both together, and when we add everything together, that's going to give us what's called a resultant vector. So it might be some forces, uh, might be the amount of tension on a wire, those kind of things are forces that we're going to be adding together to get this. So the resultant vector basically kind of looks like this. Let's suppose that we've already added components together and we get this as our resultant vector. We get AI plus BJ as a result and we add everything together. Okay, now usually the question is going to ask you to find the magnitude and direction of the resultant force. So once you add it all together, then we want to find these two things. So here basically it's going to be, now magnitude is nothing new. That's the same formula we've been working with already in this section. Magnitude of V is just the square root of A squared plus B squared. Nothing new there. However, it's also going to ask you for the direction. So when you find this, you want to take the A and B and figure out what the actual angle is measured from the x-axis. That's going to be these formulas here. So if you F, that's your vector, if the vector ends up in quadrant number two or three, that means you want to use this first formula. You're going to take the inverse tan of, of the, the B component divided by the A component and you have to add 180 degrees if you're in here. So again, we, we can just put this directly into the calculator, we'll get an answer, but we have to add 180 to make it proper uh, so that it ends up in quadrant two and three. Now, if the vector that you find here, this one here, ends up in the first or fourth quadrant, then you don't have to add 180 to it. You're still going to take the inverse tangent of B over A, but we don't need to add 180 in that case. Now, if you, if you think that these formulas might look familiar, that's true. They are going to be familiar. These are actually the same ones that was used in the session where we talked about the polar coordinates. When we go from the rectangular into polar, this is exactly the same formulas. This also applies here in this case for finding the direction of the resultant vector. So now that we've taken a look at these definitions and properties, let's go ahead now and apply it with an example. Okay, now we're ready for the example. We have two vectors that we want to add together and get the result in. It's asking us, using the diagram, find the direction and the magnitude of the resultant force. In other words, they want us to find F1 plus F2. Now in order to do that, we have to take what information is provided here and turn it into components. So we're given that force 1, we have 30 and there's an N next to it. Now the N stands for Newtons. It's a unit of force that you'll talk more about in physics. That force is being applied at a 45 degree angle. So that, that's the first one. Now the second one, we have F2, that's 70 newtons, and that's being applied at 120 degrees. So we just talked about a way that we can break these up into uh, components. We did that earlier, in a previous video. So you're going to use that same format when we uh, write these out. So the idea is you want to write these both out into components form into the I and the J format. We're going to add the I and the J components together separately, and then that's going to give us our resultant vector, and that's what we're going to use to find the magnitude and also the direction. So the first thing we have to do is we must go ahead and write these uh, into component form. So F1 is going to equal the magnitude of F1, that's going to be 30 newtons, and we're going to do cosine alpha, in this case it's 45 degrees, and then you're going to also write 30 sine 45 degrees, and that's going to be J. So that's the way that you could take the first force, F1, and write it up and break it up into components um, by doing that. That's the first force. Now we also have to do it for F2. That's going to be 70 newtons is the force applied that one. And that's being applied at 120 degrees. So we're going to have 120 degrees I. And we're going to do 70 sine 120. That's going to be J. So now we have uh, these two. And we're eventually going to add these together. Now, 45 and 120, these are special angles that we can get off our unit circle or our table. However, instead of putting those exact values in, I'm actually going to go ahead and do this in decimals because a lot of times, if you're doing this kind of problem with an online homework system, they're just going to want you to write the answer uh, in terms of decimals anyway. They'll tell you what to round to. 
So in this case, even though I know I could put exact values in, when I try and add them together, I'm going to get something that's going to be kind of messy because I get a, a number plus a radical I'll get as a result. And then it's going to be more difficult for finding the, the angle and also uh, for finding the magnitude. Because the magnitude I'm going to have to break down and turn that into a decimal anyway, so why not just go ahead and turn this into decimals to start with. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so we'll turn these into decimals. 30 cosine 45 is 21.21i uh, and 21.21j. Now notice here, I'm actually only using two decimal places. Now if you're doing online homework uh, system, that probably requires you to have more accuracy. So you need to expand this out to more decimal places because later on, um, when you, we find the magnitude and direction, if we round this uh, too much, then the answer might be rounded enough to where it's not going to match what the computer has. The computer always will have the exact solution. So just word of, word of the wise here, just go ahead and use more decimal places. But in this case, uh, on my exams and also for what I'm doing here, two decimal places is going to be enough. Okay, so notice that these are both the same because cosine 45 and sine 45 both have the same value from the table. Let's do F2. F2 is going to be 70, uh, let's go ahead and do decimal version, 70 cosine 120 in the calculator. That's going to give you negative 35i. We know that cosine 120 from the table is negative 1 half, so we could have gotten it that way, still would have given us negative 35. This one, if we write that as a decimal, okay, uh, and, and use our calculator for that one, you're going to get 60.62j. That's the decimal equivalent for that one. We're going to add both of these together, so we're going to get F1 plus F2. Now that F1 plus F2, that is going to be our resultant force. We're going to add both these together individually. Now if I add the first two together, I get negative 13.79i. Add these together, I get 81.83j. So that right here, this is my resultant vector. This is the one that I'm going to use in order to find the magnitude and the direction. We just talked about the formulas that we got to use to find the magnitude and direction of the resultant force. This is my A, and this right here, the 81.83, that's my B. So the first thing I want to find is the magnitude, F1 plus F2. That's just using the square root formula. Negative 13.79 squared and 81.83 squared. I'm going to put that into calculator and the magnitude that you're going to get, if you work all that out, you're going to get 82.98, so almost 83, and that's going to be in terms of newtons because that's the same unit of force that the original ones had. So this is your final answer for magnitude. That's one of my answers, 82.98 newtons. Now the other thing we want to find is the direction of the resultant force. So in order to do the direction, we have to use one of those two formulas we talked about that involves the inverse tangent. So it's the inverse tangent to be over A, but depending on which quadrant that we're in, we need to either add 180 or uh, leave it, don't add anything. So I have to figure out which quadrant this vector is in. Now how you can do that is imagine this as a set of points. This is the X value and this is the Y value. If we plot something like this, let's just do a real quick plot on this one. We don't have to be accurate with this. We're just getting a rough idea of where, what quadrant it's in. Negative 13.79, that's going to be this direction. That's uh, in the negative X direction going to the left. 81.83 is going up. So way, way up here, I'm going to have something that's going to end up in the second quadrant, negative X, positive Y. We end up there in that quadrant. I did this a rough sketch to tell which quadrant I'm in. So this tells me I'm going to be in quadrant number two, which means that I need to actually add 180 when I do the formula involving the theta. So here's the formula I'm going to use. I'm going to do theta equals inverse tangent. I'm going to do B over A, and I have to add 180 degrees. That's the exact formula I'm going to use. The B is 81.83. The A is negative 13.79. So I have theta is equal to inverse tangent. I have 81. 0.83 divided by a negative 13.79 and I have to add 180 to that. So this is going to be my setup for finding the, the theta. So when I do that, I'm going to end up getting theta is equal to 99.57 degrees. I'll just put that whole thing into the calculator at once and instantly it'll, just get, it'll give me the final answer with the 180 added to it, 99.57 
degrees, which makes sense because 99 degrees is actually in the second quadrant. So what I found was I actually found what angle the final force is going to be at. Now what this means physically is imagine I'm, I'm pulling a box or pulling an object with these two forces. I have forces going like that. What will happen is this final resultant vector, that's actually the path that that object is going to take as I'm pulling it. So it's going to move in that direction at 99.57 degrees. So that's, it'll move in that direction and these two forces combined together will actually give you kind of a larger force so you actually have more pulling power because we're pulling in two different directions. We end up getting both of them combined together uh, to give you a larger force. That's physically uh, what's happening to that. Uh, and so we've answered all the questions. We have our magnitude here, 82.98. And right here, this is going to be your direction, 99.57 degrees.